Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, where it's time for today's Art by Exercise. Let's go side by side with versatile artist Pink McGarry as he discovers how water and oil can be mixed together to become the best of friends. Okay, today we're going to um, paint water, but I'm going to try and demonstrate how water can be different depending on the lighting and the circumstances. So I'm going to paint two side-by-side -side pictures of, of water and um, hopefully show that they can be different according to where they are. So let's do a... Actually, I'll go a bit higher than I, than I have for this uh, particular demonstration. Let's go just put some brown, brown in. Uh, that's actually yellow ochre um, and a bit of... And a bit of uh, burnt umber. They often work quite well together, those two colours. And I'll do the same on this side, maybe a little, let's put a little bit darker. Windsor lemon in there as well. So let's uh, call these, we'll call these for want of a better word, river banks. Okay, so see the, the uh, grasses up. Okay, now when you're painting um, uh, uh, water, um, especially when there's a bank, often the bank will reflect into the water. So um, we need to de delineate where the, the bank ends. So I'm going to put a little bit more uh, of dark in here because it's often darker near the, the edge because it's wet. And um, just put a little bit of green in there as well because they're often the, where they're near water, the, the, um, the uh, grasses grow green. And as I'm often painting, African scenes where the grasses are really burnt, uh, you, you tend to forget there is green, there is green there. But in in this picture, in most banks there are some green. So there we have kind of just a very rudimentary bank. Um, I'll just grab my palette and I just put a few stalks and bits of leaf, just make it a little bit more realistic. Okay, so there's there's the two banks. And the bank reflects. So let's do the reflection of the bank. Using a quite same brush, a bit bigger. Yep, same brush, a bit bigger. Same brush. Uh, we'll just make this. That's brown umber I'm putting into it with ochre, I'm making it a nice smooth. I'm gonna put a little bit of green in there because there is green in the. in the bank. Again, return to our dark brush, just to get, delineate the edge, a little, lost the edge a little bit where we've been putting the water in. I could perhaps put a little, well, yeah, I'll come, actually I'll come back to that. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And this is the bank reflecting. and. Again, I'm just using a fairly simple palette of burnt umber, yellow ochre, a little bit of green. It doesn't really matter what colour green, but so there we're nearly at the same stage on both sides here. Again, putting a little bit dark in just to oops, that's a that's some purple, not a brown, but just to delineate the edge. Now then, on one side we're going to have the sky reflecting. I've gone to my French ultramarine and white. Okay. And we'll put in a little very faint touch of Alarisian in there. Uh, just to bolden up the colour. This is not a complicated process. And then with this other one, we're going to go a different colour. This is a thicker, browner water. We're just going to go to the burnt umber, sorry, yellow ochre and, and yellow, just to lighten it up. So you can see the same effect, but with a different colour. Slightly again with the Anorizian crimson. So. A 
Now we need to make this look a little bit more blended. Draw across the other way. And go back to a little brush we got some paint on. A little bit of blues in here just to little flex of light just to suggest the water hitting the bank. And the same on the other side. It's kind of a mix on your brush of white and blues just to and then we'll bring some lines across and we'll use um Nice brush called a sword liner here. Just to bring, the, bring that line across like that. Using blue and white on there. In fact, we'll just put a little bit of, little fleck of white in there just to make it look uh, more realistic. Then you can do the same on the other side with the other water. It's a little bit bizarre having two Banks the same with different colour water, but I'm just um, drawing this across just to give the, the idea of, of smoothness. Just lighten that up a little bit. There you have it. Got the light reflecting with the blue sky on that side and the light reflecting on different coloured water on the other side. And yet both are banks and both uh, water. So I think that helps you. Thanks, Pip. Great little exercise there for seeing how you can use oils to make a splash. Now, before we take a little break, let's join international pastel artist Vic Beercroft for a simple top tip for achieving picture perfect results. I'm going to show you how to use transfer paper. Now, not everybody is good at freehand drawing, and I, for one, am not very good at drawing flowers. So if I want to do this little project uh, of the rose, then I'm going to use the uh, transfer paper, in this case white on black, to get the outline that I want to get started. It makes life so much easier for me, uh, and for anybody else, of course. Um, what you need to do is make sure, first of all, the transfer paper is the right way around. If you just put your finger over it like that, you can see it produces the white mark on the black paper. And then together with a soft pencil, we don't want a hard pencil, not with uh, velour paper, a soft pencil, just go over the lines, work methodically, probably from the outside in in this case, so we don't miss anything. Uh, just hold the paper steady with uh, your other hand to stop it slipping. If the paper slips, of course, you'll get a distorted image. So you can either draw it very carefully or just sketch it through, whichever you prefer. And it saves you a lot of time using transfer paper as well. You know, in the old days, I remember from being at school and so on, we used tracing paper where you have to trace over the outline, then reverse it, draw it on the back, and then lay it on the paper and go through it again. So probably about three times for the same sketch. With transfer paper, once will do the job. And don't forget, of course, you put your outline that you want to sketch over in front of the transfer paper and the transfer paper over your paper. This works on any surface, not just velour paper. It'll work on uh, any drawing paper, of course. The white will only work on a dark surface, like black or very dark grey. And now and again, if you feel like you might have lost your way, just lift it at the bottom make sure that it's coming through and carry on. It's always a good idea to check before you totally lift off the, the transfer and find suddenly you've missed something important. So a final lift. Everything's in place. I think just about. I missed a bit at the top. And then we're ready just to take that off and we'll have a precise soft outline of the rose on the black paper and any of these stray white marks that you get will rub off very very easily 
with your finger, and if necessary, if they're quite deep or quite visible, just go over them with a black pastel. So now we're ready to paint the rose. Trace down is a great accessory to have on hand and can be used time and time again. Remember, all products featured on today's program are available from the SAA Home Shop. Visit saa.co.uk for details. Well, it's time for a quick break now, folks, but join me in part three when I'll be demonstrating another simple exercise to help develop your watercolour techniques. An enthusiastic SAA professional artist, Dee Cowell, will be showing us the difference between art bars and ink tense blocks and revealing how gum arabic is the perfect solution for correcting mistakes. See you soon. Mm -hmm.